are the Balish family. I'm Dorothy. And I'm Kip. And we have four children. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm 18. I have three little sisters. Jessica's the oldest. Jennifer, seven. <coughs> and Kristen, five. I don't like that. And all four of our children are hearing. Well, this is going to be an experience for me, working with deaf parents who have hearing children. <coughs> Jennifer is very, very explosive. She's angry. <coughs> Jessica, she's not as bad as Jennifer. No! But she's very sneaky. We pull hair all the time. <laughs> Kristen, she's the baby of the family. Of course, the baby always gets what they want. <coughs> Sometimes I feel like my sisters take advantage of my my parents being deaf. You put that. No, you put that down. That's not my problem. My mom, she disciplines, but I don't think she disciplines them that well. Because they're devils. They don't listen. All three of the girls, they think that because we're deaf, they can be wild. I've got wild kids on my hands here. It's very stressful. Shaky. Okay, up. At bedtime, my sisters are crazy. They don't go to sleep on time. Yes, my butt. Not too long. Come on, go up. You are so a brat. Shut no. up. Oh. Bang. What kind of bedtime is this? Okay, nothing more. We do have challenges with communicating. Jessica knows some sign language, but it's not fluent because my mom talks. Get off. <laughs> Come on, get off. <laughs> Come on, get off the car. <laughs> this is crazy. These parents are not even teaching their kids American Sign Language. How can they communicate properly? There's a little bit of a strange relationship between me and Kip. He's my stepdad. Sometimes we just stay away from each other. It's like he's not really involved in what I'm doing. This is really sad to see. I feel that I have a lot of responsibilities on me. Mom, how is it my responsibility? You're the mom, oh, no, not me. Oh, oh. I'm kind of like the hearing mother in a way. Stop! Chris, don't knock it off! These parents need to take responsibility of what's theirs. I feel like sometimes that I didn't really live a normal teenage life. I had to grow up really fast. You can leave, but you're going to bed early and you're not getting no snacks. I do not like You can it. pick. No. I'll let you pick. I just want to be the sister. I want to be there for him, not the mother. This just isn't fair for this poor girl. I just feel like uh, giving up with them, with the rules and disciplining. We need help. <laughs> we need your help, Super Nanny. Well, these parents certainly need my help. I better get on my way. When I first saw Jo and she came into my home, I felt relieved to see her when she got there. So, come up. OK, ma'am. I was welcomed very warmly, and I was very pleased to see that the interpreter was there already to help me be able to have full communication with his family. Who do we have here? Kristen. I'm Jojo, and how old are you? Five. Five. I'm Jessica. You're Jessica. And how old are you, Jessica? Eight. You're eight. And you're? Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Pleased to meet you. You're Melissa. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Pleased to meet you. Nice. When I first saw Joe, I couldn't believe that it was really happening. My husband. <laughs> Hi, pleased to meet you. That's Kip. So today, I'm going to be observing your family. So please just carry on. I wasn't in the house long when I saw a clear example of how the children ignore their own mother. They don't look at her facial expressions or her signs. Goku. The girls completely ignore their mum. She asked them to put their shoes away and they just walked on by. Hey! Goku, come on. Where are you going? It's easy to get away because with stuff because my mum and dad are deaf. Don't be thinking. <laughs> What were they doing down there? Jennifer's sister in, in whispers, and I can't see what she's talking. 
Jennifer, I, I can't hardly read her lips because she covers her hands, see? Yeah, I don't like for them to be talking behind my back like that. Some kids do speak behind their parents' backs, but because these parents are deaf, their kids do it right underneath their nose. No! And I think that's just disrespectful. Clinton! Clinton! And it's not just the older girls that disrespect mum. The younger girl, Kristen, does the same. <laughs> you want some lunch? Did you understand what your mum was saying? No. You know, not only do these kids choose to ignore their parents, but they don't know enough American Sign Language either. Because Melissa's very good at sign language, it means that her parents rely on her all the time. She becomes their interpreter 24-7. Stop hitting, Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, stop, right now. Do you want me to put the game away? No! Pick this up. That's Whose is it? Jessica. Jessica, come here. Because I said, come pick this up. I could see that Melissa's in a very difficult situation, so I wanted to have a little talk with her just to see how she's holding up. What does it feel like for you, as an 18-year-old, having the responsibility of taking care of your three younger sisters? I just feel bad because they don't listen to my mom, but they'll listen to me. But I'm interested in what it makes you feel. Yeah. Like, it, I get overwhelmed. Yeah. Sometimes. Let's talk like, about this in your room. Melissa's had a responsibility, like a third parent. And that's a lot for her to handle as a young adult. I mean, she's 18 years old. I just think it'd be, like, it'd be really good for us to be able to communicate if we're all on the same page, you know? So the biggest thing that your parents could do for you right now would be what? Just take care of my sisters. And I just want what's best for my sisters. But what's... But, like, help me out, too, in a way, you know? Just be there for me when I need them. I don't even have time to be a kid anymore. Like, that's over. I don't so, even what, have time. What, you're, what you're really saying, even though that you're an 18 year old woman and you hold down two jobs and you earn your own dollar, inside there's just still this little girl that wants to be held, huh? Really? Huh? Seriously? Huh? As an 18 year old? Huh? Yeah. You still want to be able to reach out to your mum and go, Mum, this is how I'm feeling? Huh? Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> well, we're going to work on this together. Kip has been Melissa's stepfather for nine years. And for those nine years, it's been very strained. I wanted to talk to him and find out more. You have a relationship with Melissa that is... No, I really don't. You don't have one. We just don't get along. She says she hates me. Yeah, it hurts me. I gotta admit, you know, I, I, sit, I can sit alone and, and even cry about it because there's no relationship between us. I do love her. I love Melissa. But she needs, we need our relationship, our family, and our future. We just need to improve all of this. I appreciate that. Thank you. It was in the afternoon when I got to talk to Kip, and I realized that the kids treat him just like they do their mother. Nobody listens. Where's your dollar? Get that food. Get that coat. I didn't give her permission. She didn't tell me where she was going. She's just going to go out and play. I can't understand what she's saying. It's hard, and they take off behind me, and I don't see them. They don't come up to me. They don't tell me. This family situation is not uncommon. Over 90% of deaf parents have children who are hearing. Later on in the evening, the whole family sat down for dinner and Kristen decided she didn't want green beans on her plate. <laughs> Mum had finally had enough, so she decided to give Kristen a timeout. OK, you go with time out. <laughs> Time out. No. No. Okay, then. I have to go in the time out today. Poo-hoo. Mum had finally had things under control, and then Melissa walked in. 
<laughs> Melissa walked in and straight away went over to Kristen and said, right, let's sit down and finish your dinner. I'm going to come sit, sit down. I haven't ate yet. Do you want to eat with me? No. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm eating too. Okay. And Melissa automatically overrode her mum's decision. And mum didn't do anything about it. I brought something home if you eat all your dinner. There really needs to be much said with regards to these parents stepping up so Melissa feels that she can step back down. What time is bedtime? Nine o'clock. Kip tells the girls to go to bed at nine o'clock. So bedtime in the Ballish family is incredibly late, to say the least. Yeah, what about? Oh, come here. Oh, what about? You love the box. Well. So they're up and down the hallway, and Mum and Dad are up and down the hallway. <laughs> and you just see it, this classic example of three little girls saying, great, we've got Mum and Dad's time. Stop. And the only way we're going to continue to have their attention and time is if we're naughty. So, hey, bingo, we know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Mum was absolutely exhausted. Dad was getting more and more frustrated, and you could see that this was a bubble that was about to burst. And this went on for like over two hours. How are you feeling right now? It's, oh it's stress. It's just too much stress. Listen. Please don't listen. Yeah. It became too much for Mum. She was very frustrated. What the hell? I became angry. I, I felt like it just kept building and building, and I was going to blow. Please, please, please. I just need your help. You'll get my help. We'll get to the bottom of this. OK. Take a. Mum was so frustrated, and I knew I could help her. I just couldn't wait for the next day so I could get teaching. The next morning, I went to the Borlish household and had a meeting with an interpreter behind me. So today, really, what I want to do is to discuss the issues that I feel need to be addressed so that we can work really hard in finding a resolution to these problems. Let's talk about communication. In every angle of your family dynamic, communication has broke down. How do you do the best you can as a parent when your kids are not learning American Sign Language? The girls do know some signs, but sometimes they drop the sign and they, they leave us parents out because we don't understand them clearly. I want to help them. I want to teach them. I want to sit down with the ASL book and teach them. But no, they just take off. They don't want to pay attention. They don't want to listen. It's mandatory. This isn't an option. Let's talk about behavior here. The kids' behavior is disrespectful. They take advantage of the fact that you are both deaf. They think, oh, well, mum and dad can't hear. But it's not the point that you can't hear. It's the point that actually your kids are growing up to feel that it's OK to even talk to their parents the way that they do. And right now, we've got two parents who want to throw the towel in, who want to give up. There are no expectations set up for these kids because you've taken that away from yourselves. When you decided to place Melissa and an authoritative figure in this house. The kids do listen to Melissa. She's hearing. I think they respect her more. I think it's, it's clear. She's strict. I know we're parents, but I think being deaf. That doesn't make you any less a parent because you are deaf. I feel so tired, and I do give up, and I do want to go to Melissa and say, help. And she says, no. You know, why won't you cooperate? You're the sister. Help mom and me. And she gets tired, and she doesn't want to. Kip, Melissa shouldn't have to. You are the parents here. Let's talk about Melissa. I spoke to her yesterday. I couldn't even see her face. 
She cried so much. She wants to reach out to the pair of you as parents. She's really in a lot of pain. You know, I, I want to go out with Melissa and have fun and play around, but she gets so angry with me. She just disagrees with everything I say. We go back to arguing, and I say, let's forget it. I, I do love you. Let's have a relationship. You know, clean up the house. You know, work with the kids. You know, I'll help you, you help me. She's been helping more than enough. She's been helping you raise your kids as she is meant to be one of your kids. Let's talk about bedtime. Ridiculous! And you'll push over the pair of you. You've got to be firmer at bedtime, but you've got to set up a routine that allows these children to wind down. Change can happen here in this house, and it can happen. It can happen today. Okay, give me your hands then. Because together we make change, okay? Yes, I promise. And I look forward to starting some work. Okay, thank you. I had a lot to teach these parents. It was about prioritising and establishing the house rules first. I'm going to make sure that Melissa's not around so that these parents can be parents. You can see it up there. This is the sign for behaviour. I want you guys to do the same. Watch it, Mum. Mm. Let's start off with the first one. Sharing and respecting your belongings and others. I went through a list of what's acceptable and what isn't, and the kids gave me sign language of yes Correct. when they understood. Look at Mum and Dad when they are speaking to you. It was the first time that we had rules because we never ever had rules. Ah, oh, Melissa, I'm glad you're here. Just signing yes is not enough for these kids. They need to become fluent with American Sign Language. So at this particular moment, I wanted to make sure that they could start to learn, and I wanted Melissa around for this. What's going to happen is that every day there is going to be a class that's going to be held by mum or dad so that you start to learn more and more ASL. These kids are not going to learn American Sign Language overnight, but if the parents make it fun, then the kids will be motivated to learn. <laughs> I hope that someday they'll be very proficient in the language and, you know, we'll just understand each other so much better. Flower. I felt it was, you know, a really good class for this family to have and I do believe that if they're consistent, that these kids are going to catch on really, really quickly. Girls, you did really well today. You just would stay focused and you were watching Mum, which was really important, and you guys did well. Learning American Sign Language for this family is going to change their communication for the better, but it's certainly not going to help the rift between Melissa and Kip. Should we sit down here? Can we all sit down here? This girl certainly needs to be heard, and she needs her parents to be able to listen to her, and together they need to be able to problem solve these issues, because they've been building up for many, many years. I feel that it's really important that you have a conversation with Melissa. So to have this family just for once and all sit down and talk and clear the air is going to be vital. Can you go through some of the true feelings that you're feeling right now? You do everything for his kids, and you don't even help me with anything. Oh, I help you. I help you with everything else. Yes, I do. Graduation. I've helped you with things. No, before. There's been, I've helped you with things. I have tried. Melissa. 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 Melissa, I've tried. Melissa, please pay attention. I wanted to take you. I wanted to take you on vacation. You said no, no, no. You always talk work. about it. You always talk. You never do it. Every time I say, oh, let's go out shopping. Let's go out shopping. No, Kip, 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 Kip. No, you'll get mad. No money. I don't have no money. Every time I'm at work, oh, you go out to eat, out to eat, out to eat. No, shut up. Shut up. Never shut up. Shut up. It wasn't successful, and Melissa was very, very angry. She just. She's had a bucket fall. I mean, it's over her head. Melissa? Get off of me. Melissa? Melissa? 
She doesn't know. Melissa ran out because she thought it'd be a waste of time talking to her mum, because her mum has never validated how she's felt. The thing is, you're not talking to somebody who knows. She doesn't know. That's the difference. After Melissa ran out on the conversation with her mum and stepdad, I convinced her to come back inside the house. But only under one condition would she do so. I don't feel comfortable having the conversation in front of Kip that I have with my mum. OK. I don't like that. OK, so you know what we could do? We could have this conversation with you and your mum. To start the ball rolling in patching things up, I knew it was important for Melissa to talk to her mum first, and we could always deal with Kip afterwards. OK. It's like, all you want is everything for your kids. You want my help only if I'm babysitting or to clean the house, to be your maid or something. When I'm home, I don't get treated, treated with respect. I had no idea some of these things that she had been feeling and holding in. I feel like it's, uh, you know, it, it, all this time had passed and I wish she had told me, you know, a long time ago. What I'd like to do now, Dorothy, is talk to you about what you should be doing as a mother. And I want you to take it on the chin. Dorothy needs to be strong enough as a mother to support her daughter emotionally. When you met Kip, it made Melissa feel threatened by that. Would I lose the closeness of my parent because now she is going to be loving somebody else as well. That is a very shaky world for a young child. And so it's created the hostility that you see between Kip and Melissa. Melissa has been holding a lot in, and she's my daughter, and I cherish her. Her needs are important to me. If she needs her mom, I want her to come to me. I want to talk. I want to communicate. So where do we go from here? We'll start from this point forward. Anything you need, come to me. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to give up on you. I am with you for life. After our conversation, we then went and found Kip. But Melissa could see exactly how upset Kip was from the events of the day. I'm trying to make it better. You can't give up. If I not give up, you can't. Why is it important for him not to give up? Because I love you. That's why it's important, because you love him. Deep down, I know he loves me. I know I love him, and he does care for me. We needed that hug, and I felt like we needed to communicate. When you're deaf, you can't hear your kids playing up. So I gave them TV monitors to be able to see exactly what was going on over night time. One in your and Jennifer's room, and one in Jessica's room. OK? Two screens. One for Mum and one for Dad. It's time for bed. No bed. When you've kissed them goodnight, then come into the sitting room with me, and then I have further information to give you. It was absolutely wonderful to see Kip and Dorothy very enthusiastic. Whilst Kip was finishing up with Jessica, it was important for me to go through the bedtime technique with Mum. When you see your children come out of their bedroom, you're going to say, time for bed, darling. The second time they come out of their bedroom, you sign to them with your face looking more serious, it's bedtime. The third time when they come out of their bedroom, and then on, you say nothing. You take them by the hand, and you place them back into their bed. Step number one, Kristen's up. Kip coming out of the bedroom. Snow bear, I can't sleep. It's bedtime, darling. When Mum told the kids to go back to bed, she meant business, and they knew exactly what she meant. <laughs> and she comes back out again. You say, it's bedtime. Say nothing else. <laughs>
I was really proud of Mum. I mean, she was following the steps perfectly. But the girls weren't done yet. The key to this bedtime technique is being persistent. you got to follow through. With these kids coming up and down, up and down, you just got to keep at it. It's important for these parents to band together, to work together as a team, because Mum was getting completely wiped out. Kathleen! So do what you would normally do. You know, sit on the sofa, put the telly on. Do what you would normally do. OK, they, they mustn't think that you're waiting around for them to make the next move. You're getting on with your evening. This is what you wanted. You wanted an evening. Yes. <laughs> Kip, wonderful tonight. You sat on her bed. You read her that story. It really was beautiful. It was cool that my dad read me a story because I haven't had it in years. What's happening here? I can see him. I can see both arms. Christian's moving around. With the new TV monitors, it means that Dorothy and Kip can keep a real good eye on their kids so they're not horsing around in their bedrooms. Oh, it's calm. It would take me three hours in the past to get them to go to bed. It was a struggle for three hours. Now it's less than an hour. This is perfect. The technique worked because I had two parents who remained calm. And that's what got you the change of behavior. Did really, really well. Peace. <laughs> Look at this. That's universal. Peace in any language. So I'm going to be leaving for several days now. Thank you so very much in helping us. We'll see you in three days. You are more than welcome. Know that tonight you proved to yourselves that you're more than capable of doing what's been taught over the last several days. Good night. Good night. It was a busy day. It had its ups and downs. I just hope that they pull through the days that I'm not going to be there. away for three days and I'm eager to see exactly how well this family have done. Eager to look at what we have here? Yes, we are. All right. Happy, happy. I do me. That's really fantastic. You know, you've made it fun for the kids to learn ASL. And so they're gonna wanna come and do it again and again with you, you know? And that's what it's all about. And I just love your whole body language. It spoke volumes there, Kip. You know, you're really playing with them and teasing them, showing them the cards, you know? Just great, and the kids really enjoyed themselves. So keep it up, well done. Keep it up, I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. It really is. Well, they went right to sleep. So tell me, Kip, what had the evenings been like for you? Uh, I feel so much better. I just feel at peace. Everything is calmer. I, I mean, you know, it's like taking a break or something. I'm so happy. This is good for me, and I, I really want to thank you, Joe. You're more than welcome, more than welcome. I am just shocked that our kids went to bed and it worked. I feel so relaxed. I just feel happy. It's been wonderful. It's healthy for your family. Yeah. Yes, it is. Of course it is. Last time she went on a cruise, she up and left us. 
That's, she just left me with all the responsibilities. I was pretty much the parent for three of three, that a whole week and a half. I was 17 at the time, 17. Didn't go to school half the time. I, I was here, I was a wreck. It was bad. You know, at the time she was 17, my father watched the kids for a week while she was, you know, they were here. And Kip's sister was here for four days. And they spent the night in their house for four days. You know, it wasn't like that. Melissa didn't stay all week like that. Okay. Well, it's obviously stirred some mm -hmm. reaction from her in, in being worried about that. History here shows me that she's had to take care of that responsibility. And because there's not been enough history laid mm -hmm. down with her seeing her own parents get to grips with discipline, that trust still needs to be developed. You know, so right now to even bring up the thought of doing that when she sees the ground still quite crumbled and not laid smooth and flat yet is rather scary for Melissa. Those words of just being able to take her away and say to her, hold on a minute, don't panic. This is where we're at right now. So it is something that we are going to have to talk about. I think it's going to be important for, you know, us to sit around the table and have this conversation with Melissa. It takes time to build, you know, it takes time to build. Yeah. I think you've seen very clearly what you need to work on, but there's been some great stuff yes, there as well. Yes, it's very clear, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, so let's move on and do what we need to do today in order to patch these things up. Yeah? Yes, we're going to keep it going. Well, we're going to fight for this. OK, so let's get going. <laughs> When reinforcement began, I wanted the girls to realise they're going to continue to learn the basics of American Sign Language, but doing so is going to be fun. We're going to play a game with the kids. These are the rules to the game. Each child has to take their turn and roll the dice. The dice will determine, whatever number it lands on, the amount of steps they will take forward if they get the sign correct. Jennifer, you start. Okay, Dad. That's right. Well done. All right. Okay. And you worked. That's right. That's right. Okay, Kristen. Three, three. Good. Just on your. That's right. The Bolish family need to keep thinking of creative ways of making American Sign Language fun. The more they can do that, the more the communication gets better. Mad! All right, one, two. It was cute to see the girls having fun with no fighting, and at the same time, they're learning American Sign Language. Two. two. OK, Jessica. Dad! They've certainly learnt a lot whilst I've been there, and these kids can see the light at the end of the tunnel, recognising that their parents oh are willing to want to spend time with them. Ball! You're the winner. It was so neat to see my three girls there. I just think it's going to teach them so much sign language. They were all happy. All right, good sportsmanship. Give each other a hug. Come on, everybody, give each other a hug. That was a good game. Who got that game? Do you like that game? That was a good game. After the dice game, there was still one more issue to deal with, and that was to get Melissa to tell her parents exactly how she felt about them going on a cruise. I feel if you plan to go on a cruise, all you think about is the cruise. Do not think about us. You not call us nothing. I did everything. I go to school. I went to work. It was hard. I don't like it. I can't, I can't do that. I have too much stress. Just the fact that she was able to tell me that, you know, I was happy about that, but, but it really hit me. It really hurt me.
advantage, take advantage of me as your daughter. I feel happy that you told me how you felt and what's going on, how you feel like that. It's time for change. From this point on, she's not going to be a mother figure. She's going to be the sister. You know, I have taken that off her shoulders. That's my, you know, burden to carry now. She got a lot out of it, and I learned that I needed to communicate with her more. I just want us to be happy as a family. Let's not think about the past. Let's let's start new. Yes. Yeah. Every day, every day new. It took so much off my shoulders. I felt I felt great for them to actually just to hear them say, "Okay, yeah, I'll take responsibility as a parent." Conversation. Conversation. I'm glad it ended with them hugging each other and, and laughing, and that's how it should be, you know? But listen, Jojo is going home now, OK? And I just wanted really to say to the pair of you that it's important to continue doing the work that you're doing. I'll keep it up and I'll keep it going. You must, you know, you must. It's very important, otherwise that breakdown in communication will be there again. Both Dorothy and Kip have realised that if they want positive results and a change of behaviour, they've got to recognise how they change it themselves first. Just follow through and keep doing it, all right? It's a matter of just keep, keep on doing it. Before Joe arrived, I was so stressed out, I had given up. And then Joe offered me a chance to change and to become a new mom. Can you take care of yourself, huh? And, and... Let your parents know what you need. Okay, so I'm really proud of you. Just turn it around. I just want to thank Jo for everything she's done for my family. She's brought in me and my mom and my dad's relationship so much closer. It's been a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. It really worked by the bed in your own room. I certainly feel that when I first arrived in this family, the lid had popped open and it was almost like everybody had permission to just let off steam. And I feel through being able to really support each family member and bring them all together it has allowed them really to push through those hard times. I just needed to thank her. She has helped me so much. I mean, 100%, I feel like I've learned from her. Hi, Kim. Bye-bye. I'm thankful to Joe. I believe that she has helped us a lot. Bye, lovies. Thank you for helping my family, Jojo. I thank them for being brave enough in allowing me into their home and to really explore the challenges that they face every day. Mm -hmm.